Preach Handley coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure healing, miracle working love. I want to talk to you today about economy and the kings of the east, or how to prosper in the coming collapse. When the temporary stock market meltdown happened August 24th and 25th, people started to wake up. One man emailed me to say he had agreed with me and sold all of his stocks before the big loss. God only knows how much money he saved. Also, he emailed me later and told me that he took my advice and purchased silver. I want to reference the following podcasts that I made previously. One on June 13, 2015, The Future and Your Economy. And the one on June 30, 2015, Roots of Economic Collapse. Not long after my podcast warning about economic collapse, 2.1 2.1 trillion was deleted in US stocks in 6 days. That's trillion with a capital T. So I want to help you by providing a panoramic view of what's really happening now. Most of the pundits on investment shows are only addressing the issue from their viewpoint as financial analysts. However, we are in a different economy now. I want to give you an overview from a non-specific but all-encompassing spectrum including marketing, finance, economic, and geopolitical underpinnings. The material in this podcast is voluminous. It's very lengthy, so I'm going to include the show notes of the podcast so that you can read the material. But during the podcast, I'm only going to cover highlights. And if you happen to be listening to this on the Prince Hanley app, you can click on the bonus button, View PDF Files, and you'll have the complete written part. I'm not a financial advisor, however, I started investing at the age of 20. I became a day trader in both securities and commodities. I also sold precious metals, silver, platinum, palladium, gold. Through my years of experience, I've learned one thing that stands out. There are cycles. This is why I invest in God's work, the greatest investment you can make. If you own stocks, my advice right now, dump the stocks that are not performing. If you're a follower of Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah of Israel, you have a right and an obligation to know what's happening. And my temporary assignment for God is to help you in this regard so that you can plan effectively and be a good steward. God wants you to be protected and to profit. So I'm going to share with you key things that are influencing the economy, but at the same time from a prophetic underpinning. The Bible tells us in Amos chapter 3 verse 7, Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. So briefly, let's talk about China. Key financial and market decisions in China are controlled by a central agency, the Communist Party. By the way, go to my website at the University of Excellence, which is www.uofe.org.org. Click on Sino-Asian Emergence on the left tab you'll see that there's a global elite in China. 83 members of the Chinese Communist National People's Congress are billionaires. So, so much for distributing the wealth. Through the years, China has built the greatest housing bubble ever. China ghost towns and the bridge to nowhere, empty projects, even empty cities. Just recently, China devalued its currency several times in order to sell more products with cheaper money. And this was one thing that had a big influence on the market recently. But the big thing is that China wants to be part of the IMF, the International Monetary Fund's SDR, which is called Spatial Drawing Rights. It's a basket of currency with the yuan being part of it. Right now, that basket, the SDR, Spatial Drawing Rights, consists of the euro, the Japanese yen, the British pound sterling, and the U.S. dollar. So China wants to be part of this. And if you read the show notes, you'll see what they've done to kind of influence this. They definitely will become a part of the SDR. And this will influence trade in the United States even more and other countries. Concerning the Middle East, one very important thing to realize is that in 1973, President Nixon and Henry Kissinger cut a deal with Saudi Arabia. We promised them military protection for the Saudis' oil fields. And as a concession, the Saudis agreed to price its future oil sales in U.S. dollars. So three things happened. It was a win-win-win. The Saudis provided lots of oil to the USA, their favorite customer. The USA protected Saudi Arabia. And number three, the Saudis shored up the U.S. dollar, which had come off the gold standard two years earlier. 
And by 1975, all the OPEC members, the oil producing economic community members, had agreed to the USA petrodollar arrangement. So this had a threefold effect, producing demand for the US dollar, raising the value of the US dollar, and providing an opportunity for governments to invest their US dollars, which they had stored up, into US treasuries and earn interest. But wait, in the early 2000s, through fracking technology developments, U.S. oil companies were able to cheaply and efficiently produce oil. Shell oil production and natural gas reserves increased in volume over 100% and 50% respectively. Well, this made Russia and Saudi Arabia suffer big losses in their gross domestic product. Why? Because in 2013, the USA overtook Russia as world's leading oil producer. In 2014, the USA overtook Saudi Arabia as the world's largest producer of crude oil. As a result, the value of the Russian ruble has dropped 50% and its stock market is down one-third since 2011. So Russia and Saudi Arabia are mad at the USA. They want to end the USA petrodollar and cut off the USA. On the other end of the spectrum, China wants to work with Russia. China is now the biggest importer also of Saudi crude oil. So you've got the Chinese, the Saudis, and the Russians forming a triad to oppose the USA and its petro money. Even Canada recently signed a currency agreement with China that they'll do business directly with China between the Canadian dollar and the Chinese yuan. So let me give you a prophetic postulate number one. King Salman, the new leader in Saudi Arabia, will align Saudi Arabia with China and Russia plus Brazil, Venezuela, and India, to commence trading oil separately from the U.S. dollar. It will be the emergence away from the petrodollar to the petro yuan, the Chinese dollar. This will bring an end to 50 years of USA petrodollar trade control. The enemies of the USA have wanted this control to stop for a long time. Now let's talk about the kings of the East. President Obama's recent deal with Iran, in my opinion, was the most foolish act of foreign diplomacy ever sealed by the USA. It financed global terrorism, and that to one of our chief enemies, Iran, and it was a bad geopolitical decision. The rift between Sunni Muslims and Shia Muslims, to which Iran aligns, has been ongoing since the death of Muhammad. The fact that 85% of Muslims subscribe to or align with the Sunni sect instantly places Obama and the USA at even more odds with the majority of Islamic nations and people. This is another reason why Saudi Arabia, not to mention Jordan and Israel, is ready to cast off from its mooring of trust with the United States, at least with the present administration. In the Holy Bible, all direction is from Jerusalem. So nations to the east are categorically included in the phrase kings of the east. China and any of her future partners in alignment may all be included in the category kings of the east. Let me read to you from Revelation chapter 16 verse 12. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. This faction, the kings of the east, will be a military and economic force in the last days and will be drawn into battle during Armageddon against Jerusalem. The reason I mention this is that it will undoubtedly take them several years to form this consortium, at least to get it oiled and worked out harmoniously. However, only seven years will be covered in the tribulation period, the 70th week of Daniel. Therefore, it's reasonable to assume that sometime between the entrance to the end times, which we are in now, and the start of the tribulation, this amalgamation will start to coalesce. The new Silk Road and the Great Marine Belt Initiative are giant infrastructure spending projects of China that will finally make sense. They'll not be like the ghost towns and the bridges to nowhere. They're designed to benefit all of Asia. The Silk Road is a program to finance and build trade and transportation ports and railways across Asia. They will link Asia together with China at the hub. China has now over three trillion USA dollars in currency reserves, plus it's the world's largest gold producer. One thing that's clear is that the kings of the East will not be part of the ten regional leaders who align with the Antichrist, the false messiah. We know this from the passage in Revelation chapter 17, verse 12. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast, the beast being the Antichrist, 
the false messiah. When John was writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit as the revelation was revealed by Jesus Christ, these ten regional leaders, these ten kings, or their kingdoms, had not existed at that time of writing. However, China, India, Iran, which is ancient Persia, had. The kings of the east may be a geopolitical force in opposition to the ten regional leaders who will align with the Antichrist in the last days. Remind yourself, though, both factions will be enemies of Israel. But in summary, we see a great geopolitical combine that will be separate from the USA and the West. These will be the kings of the east. Let me give you my prophetic postulate number two. The kings of the east will not be part of the ten regional leaders who are assigned with the false messiah, or the antichrist, the beast. They may be in economic opposition to his strategy. They will be a geopolitical entity separate from the USA and the West. Now let's talk about the economy. The dollar wars have taken their course. The USA will be the loser in this round. Only a divine miracle will save the USA, and that will be dependent upon if she decides to align herself with and support Israel. Today, a leading cable network had this headline in their money section. Mom and pop investors are dumping their investments and moving to cash at levels not seen since the financial crisis of 2008. Again, go back and listen to those two podcasts or read the show notes of the two podcasts I mentioned at the start. So let me give you Prince Hanley prophetic postulate number three. Warning, the next subprime debacle in the USA will be in the sector of automobile loans, automobile financing. My friend, if you don't have 50% of the money to put down on an automobile loan, save your money and buy a good use car. Don't take a loan out for over three years. If it's not comfortable for you to do that, buy a used car, a good one. Wait. Don't get tied up in a five- or six-year loan, no matter how good the interest is. You're going to end up paying way much for it. And listen to me again, a prophetic postulate. The next subprime debacle in the USA will be in the sector of new automobile financing. Take this warning and remember it. Be free, my friend. Leave yourself a margin of comfort. In my podcast teaching June 30th, 2015, titled Roots of Economic Collapse, I gave suggestions as to what to do in this economy. If you've not read the show notes of that podcast, or if you have not done what I suggested, go back and read. I have provided suggestions for both inflation and deflation. What to do in either environment. Now let me give you a big suggestion. Read prayerfully Ecclesiastes chapter 11, but let me just tell you part of it. Cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. Give a serving to seven and also to eight, for you do not know what evil will be on the earth. Notice when the Bible says give a serving to seven, also to eight. It's showing like not just saturation, completion, but more than that, to bring new life. Increase your giving, my friend. In Ecclesiastes, it also tells us, He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. When I was a little boy, I used to visit my grandfather and my uncle on their farm. They sowed no matter what the weather looked like, and they always reaped nice, abundant crops. Let me read Ecclesiastes 11, verse 4 again. He who observes the wind will not sow. He who regards the clouds will not reap. If a farmer sits in his chair, out on the porch, rocking away, watching the wind, watching the clouds, he's not going to go sow, and he's not going to go reap. My advice to you in this coming economic collapse is, in the morning, sow your seed. In the evening, do not withhold your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. You can read that in verse 6 in Ecclesiastes chapter 11. My friend, I want to give you a prophetic postulate number 4. Sow as much as you can into God's work for economic miracles. In this coming economy, we're in a different day now. We're at the entrance of the end times. If you don't have money to sow, then make a monthly faith pledge. Pray, and as God speaks to your heart, make a pledge to give a certain amount each month. You may not even have the money around, but if you do that, just watch. 
God will help you. He will work with you. He'll bring that money in somehow or show you how to get it to keep that pledge. And then watch because God will help you and bring you miracles as a result of that sowing. Let me repeat that. Prophetic postulate number four for the coming economy. Sow as much as you can into God's work for economic miracles. If you don't have money, make a monthly faith pledge. God will help you and bring you miracles. And let me repeat, in the morning sow your seed, in the evening do not withhold your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. I want to give you an opportunity, if God speaks to your heart, but if you would like to work with us to reach nations for Christ and in our projects to do exploits in the earth, one way to evangelize is by working with God, helping reach people with the good news. Your donation to Hanley World Services Incorporated help us reach nations. They help us do exploits that other people aren't doing. Lots of times we're working on projects that are different than what have been done or that other maybe ever will be done again. I smuggled 4,000 signs into Israel, and God did mighty miracles. Soldiers were putting these signs on the stocks of their weapons. Policemen were putting them on the walls in the police station telling that Messiah Yeshua died for us, was buried, and is alive. There are many ways to do things, my friend, but I like to listen to the Spirit of God and do what God tells me to do. After all, when I stand before God on Judgment Day, I only have to answer for what I have done and how I have obeyed. Let me ask you something if you're listening to this podcast, the most important question of your life. If you were to die right now, do you know for sure that you'd go to heaven? If not, pray this prayer. Just pray, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, if Jesus is really my Messiah, please reveal him to me, and I will serve you the rest of my life. Please forgive my sins. Help me to live for you the rest of my time on earth, and take me to heaven when I die. Amen. This has been your friend, Prince Hanley, coming to you with 100,000 watts of pure, healing, miracle-working love. Baruch Abba, Adonai.